So this is the Magnum Pro Polish. Um, basically, a scrubber has two tanks. Your solution tank is actually in the walls. This is your whole recovery tank where all the slurry is going to end up. Okay. So you're going to need a place to dump all that slurry. Okay. And it's going to be a big mess. Outside. Outside. Um, it's wide open. Um, you know, if you do get a, on your initial grind, because you're pulling up so much concrete, you're going to get a, you know, maybe four inches of concrete on the bottom. Okay. It's nice and open. You can actually scoop it out with a little shovel if you can't rinse Wait, it out. Right well, then it's in that That's okay. thing. Okay. It's easier to clean that. That's true. So your fill point's here. Uh, there's also a fill point on the front. You have a sight tube on the back, which tells you how much solution is in there. Okay. Uh, for polishing, we just use straight water, no okay. chemical. Okay. Uh, the machine tips up. When it's not full of water, it's a lot easier. Uh, uh, you'll get a little dripping, like you see there. Yep. So the machine uh, has an all seven gauge steel frame, all powder coated, all stainless fasteners. Uh, this is the optional pro polish head. So it is all stainless steel. You have higher RPM motors and more down pressure. So this has higher down pressure, higher speed. Um, you can see um, compared to a normal machine, there's more overlap on the brushes. So you don't get center striping. Plus the head is fully levelable. Um, what you do is there's two levels here gives you both access. You drop the head all the way down, loosen all the bolts, get the head level, tighten everything back up. So it's pretty simple. Okay. To access your uh, where your pads go, uh, you undo the two large knobs, just slides right off. These are actually your, bra uh, your pad drivers for everyday cleaning with okay. the diamond pads. Okay. Um, you can see it's a scissor system. They just drop right off the driver. To get them back up, you just do the opposite. Squeeze, lift. Um, these are your pad drivers. They have a center retainer. Comes off kind of the same way. So you pull the center out of the pad, put the pad on here, and then squeeze it down. And that locks it in. Okay. That's for your daily maintenance uh, or weekly. Yes, you don't scrub with these. Okay. Yeah. And we'll put these to the side because we're not using these right now. These are the ones we are using. These are the diamond drivers. They look very similar on top. On the bottom, they're a little different. You have an inch of high density foam and then this super Velcro grip face. Um, when polishing, it's similar to woodworking. You start with a low grit and work your way up until you get the achieved smoothness and shine you're looking for. These are the resin diamond discs. These are 50 grit. Um, basically, we run five on a brush, and you just put them where the little white dots are, and they stick pretty well. Now, on the lower grits, these will last about 5,000 square feet a set. Um, as you get up into the higher grit, obviously, they'll, they'll last longer to the point where the 3,000 grit will go for 80, 100,000 square feet. Oh, wow. These just go back on the machine. Uh, you can see there's a little gimbal in them, so they do form to the floor because uh, no floor is perfectly level. Mine is. Laser level. Now the first grinds are going to be loud, and, and then as you get finer and finer, uh, you get reduction in grinding noise to where it's almost silent. Uh, back to the machine. It flips back. It gives you access to all your batteries. With this pack, you should be able to get easily seven hours of polishing time. Uh, the machine has two go buttons under the handle. As soon as you press them, the machine drives. There's a speed knob up on top so you can control how fast you're going. In polishing, you want that down. You want to go very slow when you're polishing. Right. Yep. And your initial grind is the most important because that's smoothing everything out on the floor. Um, you do a forward and reverse as well. This one has, has a the red toggle switch, keeps it in reverse. That way you can go back and forth over an area 
like we're going to do one pet at a time. Okay. Back and forth, you can do S's, figure eights, uh, as long as you're covering every part of the pad with the same amount of passes. All right. Uh, the screen here shows you battery condition, so we're fully charged. Next one is water to the floor. It's adjustable with that toggle. Um, usually I'm on the second setting. Second. Yeah, there's actually, it goes in groups of two. So that's, oh, okay. that's off. One. One. Two. two. All right. And then when you have enough water on the floor when you're doing your grind, you can actually shut it off and use the existing water so you'll, you won't use that much water. Okay. Uh, next one is your adjustable down pressure. That has five settings as well. We're going to run all the way up on high. Um, this lowers your scrub deck. So if the scrub deck is down, ready to go, your water's ready to go. Uh, as soon as I hit the button to drive, everything will start up. Okay. This uh, last thing is your squeegee. When you lower that, um, you. squeegee goes down, vacuum motor goes on. Okay. When you raise it up, it stays on for about 18 seconds. It's clearing all the water out of the hose. Cool. The drain for your dirty water tank is right here. Just a pop cap. Uh, the squeegee is a swing squeegee. It's also a breakaway. If you should really jam it on something, it's going to pop off its mount. Real short vacuum run. That's it. So there's nothing hidden throughout the machine. And then this is all inch and a half tubing. As soon as it hits the tank, it goes to two inch. So if there would be any, it would be in here. Uh, the blades are reversible four times. Right now you're dragging on this inside edge. When that uh, loses performance and gets a, a bevel on it, flip it over here, and then you have two more up top. Oh, cool. And it's all stainless through bolts. So now's the boring part. We just grind now. And it's about, um, with your lower grits, six to eight passes. Uh, and then when you get into higher grits, it'll be less, four to six passes. Now, when you do six to eight passes, and you said that lasts about 5,000 square feet, that's with six to eight passes. Right. Okay. Correct. Good. Oh, the last thing, there is a two-speed switch here on the side. Um, so you can hear the speed of the motors. That's low. And that's high for polishing. I am. Um, just enough water to keep the diamonds wet. And with brand new diamonds, it'll take a little bit to break them in because they're inset in the resin.
so your your steps of grinding are you're actually leveling the concrete, getting out imperfections, making everything one layer uh, quickly, and then you're just polishing after that. So really, the first two steps are grinding, then you're polishing. So, see these troweling marks? Yeah. Some of those are kind of deeper, so it depends if you want those visible or not. Okay. If you want it to look like a granite countertop, perfectly smooth, you're going to have to keep going on it. If you don't mind a couple of those in the floor. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Just like, uh, you know, so you have a... Eventually completely polishes out. You could get those all the way out. I mean, when, when you're done with the 3,000 grit, is it going to, will you see like a stain behind it? You will, yeah. Even yeah. you put a sealer coat on top? Because i got to put a sealer on top of it. You are. Oil barrier type sealer. Okay. Yeah. Because when oil and jet fuel stuff drips. Okay. Uh, you will see those as a little, in, uh, a low spot. Yeah. So you can keep going on it and get rid of them? No, I think it's still through it. So at this point, if you don't grind out all of the marks, they're going to be left later? So You'll see point. some of the marks, yeah, as imperfections. So how many imperfections do you don't want to go is important at this point? Right. It depends how deep you want to go in the floor. Let's say you have a, a table, a dining room table full of small dents. How much are you going to sand that if you want them all completely gone? Or if you want to see little ones? Well, that's densifiers. That doesn't stay on top of the floor. Isn't that? Densifier soaks in. It actually makes the top layer of concrete harder, uh, makes it more scratch resistant. But I'll be putting a sealer on top of that. You're still probably going to see marks like that. Because if you feel it, you can feel this is smooth, and then right here it's just a little bit rough because it's a little deeper. It's a little it's deeper. Pitted. Yep. And, and you can keep going on it. Exactly. Or you can just leave it. Is this a fiber floor? It is a fiber floor. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually going to go a little more on this. We do have these uh, 
We have these concrete prep tools that are 25 grit with exposed diamonds on metal blades that'll go a lot faster for your initial grind. I'll have to go look. Yeah, just go back and forth over the same area that I have already done. Rick, how do you know when those diamonds are worn out and they need to be replaced? There is nothing left but Velcro. Okay. So all the way through. And how long does it take to sort of get to the diamond with a new set? Um, it doesn't one, you know, six, ten feet. Okay. That should be good. So now go up with the... No, you can still run them. Just throw your squeegee down. This is an example of one of our diamonds. Uh, that's your grinding side. And that's how they're held on. There's Velcro on the backing. Uh, that's how they're held on to the uh, diamond driver. And when has it worn? Uh, when there's no more grinding surface left and you're into the Velcro is when they're gone. Are you going to switch? I'm going to switch. Uh, it's also important you pick up in between grinds uh, and not just leave the slurry down and switch diamonds because what happens is um, you have 50 grit diamonds on the floor then and then you're going at it with 150. Um, there's a chance you'll keep grinding 50 grit. Uh, it's more important at the higher grits. So now you just loose knobs, take off your shroud. Snap the brush down, flip it over, rip 50 grits off. Can you spin them? Yeah, you can. Yep. Plop the new ones on. one or two ways. They'll either grind spots, sections all the way up, like we're going to do here, or what they'll do is run one grit and just go over the whole floor a bunch of times, move up to the next grit, and uh, yeah. Yeah, so I would, in your case, you do sort of a hybrid where you Keep the same grid on, just do sections at a time, and just move section to section. Yep. Since you're not worried about uh, appearance like in a retail facility or like in a production facility. Uh, a lot of people get impatient and try and rush the process and maybe skip steps. Uh, or don't do enough on the initial grind. Is your biggest. I was saying, that's what it sounds like. The initial yeah. grind is where you make the difference after that. Um, Typically, you spend half the time doing the initial grind. It'll be half of your polishing time. So that's one, that's one step on the initial grind, and you've got four after that. Correct. Half of your time is on the first. First two. You can hear it's not as loud now as we step up in grit. And it helps if you have uh, maybe music or an iPad with movies on.
It does the um, actually. I was just going to say some of the concrete polishing guys we sell machines to, uh, we actually put uh, iPod chargers in the command so they can keep their phone charged while they're operating the machine and polishing. Good. I think we could probably pull this up now. Pardon me? Uh, we're done with the 150 grit, so I'm recovering all the slurry, and we're going to step up now to 400 grit. And then after 400, we're going to densify it, and then go 815 and 3,000. Um, Eric is going to utilize our QR code on the machine. It's also on the key switches. Um, what it does, it actually takes you to the, this specific machine's homepage. Uh, you can access manuals. You can do a preventive maintenance on this machine. All the born on info is there. So it tells you what brushes were shipped with it, what batteries, um, squeegee blades, everything about the machine build. Um, you can also call for assistance if you have a question about the machine. You can email for help. You can actually order parts. If uh, this customer selects to order parts, orders new squeegee blades, that order actually goes to new system uh, for them to place the order with us. Uh, there's also register your machine, and there's videos about the machine right there. All the way up. All the way down. As much as possible. Do that with, uh, every, every grit. Every grit. Yes. And what pressure is that? Uh, this is 300 pounds of high pressure. And whenever they're maintaining the floor with the regular pads, what pressure would they use? Max pressure. With concrete and polishing, uh, the higher the pressure, the better. And also high Uh, applying the densifier with a pump-up sprayer. The densifier, uh, well, I put a heavy coat on. 
you're getting heavier. Is it? Uh, you can either use a pump-up sprayer or you can just dump some on the ground and use a, a microfiber flat mop to spread it. And then we'll... No, because we're going to continue grinding. Uh, we're actually recovering this off the floor. We're waiting. Uh, it's going to stay in about 20 to 30 minutes. React with the concrete. Um, it'll start to get thick like syrup instead of thin like water. And that way you know it's reacting with the concrete and it's time to pull it up. Once you're done with your 400 grind, identify the whole floor and then go home for the night. Come back in the morning. Well, once densify it, recover it all, let the floor rest. Okay. It's still densify. reacting. So what are we doing now? Uh, we have densified the floor and now uh, actually worked it in with 800 grit. So we are working it in and polishing at the same time. And now I've gone to 1500 grit. And it's all personal preference on what grit you stop. Uh, some people, like industrial facilities, will stop at 800. Some people stop at 1500. Some people stop at 3000. It's all a per personal preference. It's better to do a little more than yeah. a little less. Yeah. Uh, just enough to lubricate the diamonds. Keeps the dust down. Yeah. Or regular red pads, but using the diamond pads for cleaning, you're also maintaining your polish. Okay. Um, things that are really shiny don't like to stay shiny. Foot traffic, vehicles, uh, dust on the floor are all abrasive and will erode the shine eventually. I can see defined light bulbs now. The six light bulbs in the reflection. Going to the, the 3,000 grit diamonds. Also, at this point, you could go right to burnishing. Oh, this is cake. Uh, we also have it available on our Mini Mag 20 inch and our riders. Oh, really? Yeah. With the Mini Mag, you have less down pressure? You would, yep. And you have less run time? Too. Yes. So obviously, you choose your machine, just like uh, you choose the machine size for 
certain size buildings. We do the same thing for certain polished jobs. The new tanks, the new machines, they'll have these options as well? No, we won't have a pro polish option. Uh, but the new machine on the disc machines have an aluminum scrub deck. They have 360 RPM motor standard, okay. and there is more overlap. Do you still use it for that polishing? Okay. That's why we're not making a polishing head, because it basically already is. I think we're done. Now all we have to do is burnish. No, it's <coughs> the concrete gets real grippy as it gets polished. Oh. You know, you take a granite countertop, run your hand over, it sort of sticks and skips. Just because uh, the amount of uh, cohesion. So you can hear that actuator moving up and down. Uh, this is actually harder on the machine than 50 grit, your low grind. Well, that's because you're doing that fine. It's so sticky, there's more surface contact, actually. Yeah, you're actually grinding more, con uh, more of the concrete rather than the high spot. Right. Now the floor is, you know, we've been, we've it's essentially been wet for two hours now, so it won't have the reflectivity that it would when it's dry. Uh, hopefully the burnishing will dry it out and we'll get maximum reflectivity then. It's still pretty good. Have you felt it? Dave, take a feel on it. And it's like glass. It's like granite.
So explain what he's, what he's doing. Uh, applying the densifier with a pump-up sprayer. The densifier, uh, well, I put a heavy coat on to get it heavier. Is it? Uh, you can either use a pump-up sprayer or you can just dump some on the ground and use a, a microfiber flat mop to spread it. And then we'll... No, because we're going to continue grinding. Uh, we're actually recovering this off the floor. We're waiting. Uh, it's going to stay in about 20 to 30 minutes. React with the concrete. Um, it'll start to get thick like syrup instead of thin like water. And that way you know it's reacting with the concrete and it's time to pull it up. So this, this is uh, a silicate based. It actually has to be removed. You do not want it to dry on the floor. So how is the slide on the floor really as important as No. No, you just want to get it on the floor and have it react with the concrete. So in other words, pump here. Um yes. Where'd you get a candy bar? <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, I'm just going to dump it, spread it with the machine. You do, and you do not want to. Uh, no, you can scrub it in with the machine and add water to rehydrate it. Just don't pick it up. Correct. Okay. And you, once you re, once it's reacted with the concrete, the concrete's densified. You recover it. You can polish on it right away. But best case scenario, you want to leave it overnight. To react even more with the concrete. So, once you're done with your 400 grind, identify the whole floor, and then go home for the night. Come back in the morning. Well, once densify it, recover it all, let the floor rest. Okay. It's still densify. reacting. Yeah. Yeah. You pulled up the floor in the densifier, but yet it's still working on the floor. Empty the floor, finish it. Correct. Now I'm just going to work this in so it's even, spreading it out. What about walking on it? I know it's going to Oh, you can. It's no problem. start to react, and I think it depends on the temperature as well. Uh, it's usually 20 to 30 minutes. I'm going to see if I have a microfiber.
Check, check. So what are we doing now? Uh, we have densified the floor and now uh, actually worked it in with 800 grit. So we are working it in and polishing at the same time. And now I've gone to 1500 grit. And it's all personal preference on what grit you stop. Uh, some people, like industrial facilities, will stop at 800. Some people stop at 1500. Some people stop at 3000. It's all a per personal preference. It's going to turn out nice, actually. How many pants? Four. We could probably stop now, but it's always better to do a little more than yeah. a little less. Yeah. Uh, just enough to lubricate the diamonds, keeps the dust down. Well, that skirt system really holds them up. Yeah. regular red pads, but using the diamond pads for cleaning, you're also maintaining your polish. Okay. Um, things that are really shiny don't like to stay shiny. Foot traffic, vehicles, uh, dust on the floor are all abrasive and will erode the shine eventually. Even stores like Home Depot, they have a contract to come in and repolish the whole store twice a year. And we actually sell machines to Lowe's. Uh, they do it a little differently. They actually polish every day with 3,000 grit. So they're cleaning and maintaining their polish. They don't have to have a contractor come in twice a year and do a $50,000 repolish. They're a little smarter than Home Depot. Three hundred. At three hundred sixty RPM. Is that the wind? Or a big gorilla? I could see defined light bulbs now. The six light bulbs in the reflection.
See that? I am going to the 3,000 grit diamonds. Also, at this point, you could go right to burnishing. It doesn't make a difference. longer if you were just using the propane. If you had a, a pure lithium, you would, uh, but not uh, the silicate. Oh, you could put more dense fire. No. Yeah, just you might as well just coat it. Correct. But they can reapply to this area. It's not going to harm anything. Yeah. Or no, you just after 150 grit, densify the whole floor. Correct, but you can redensify it. It won't hurt to hit it when you're doing the whole floor. No. No, but you can hit it with the densifier. No. No, no, you don't have to regrind at all. But you're going to have some overlap. Right. Nice and quiet, huh? Oh, this is cake. Uh, we also have it available on our Mini Mag 20 inch and our riders. Oh, really? Yeah. With the Mini Mag, you have less down pressure? You would, yep. And you have less run time? Yes. So obviously, you choose your machine, just like uh, you choose the machine size for certain size buildings, you do the same thing for certain polished jobs. The new tank, the new machine, they'll have these options as well? No, we won't have a pro polish option. Uh, but the new machine on the disc machines have an aluminum scrub deck. They have 360 RPM motor standard, okay. and there is more overlap. You can still use it for that application. 
polishing. That's why we're not making a polishing head, because it basically already is. I think we're done. Now all we have to do is burnish. No, it's <laughs> the concrete gets real grippy as it gets polished. Oh. You know, you take a granite countertop, run your hand over, it sort of sticks and skips. Just because uh, the amount of uh, cohesion. So you can hear that actuator moving up and down. Uh, this is actually harder on the machine than 50 grit, your low grind. It's so sticky, there's more surface contact, actually. Yeah, you're actually grinding more, con uh, more of the concrete rather than the high spot. Right. Now the floor is, you know, we've been, we've it's essentially been wet for two hours now, so it won't have the reflectivity that it would when it's dry. Uh, hopefully the burnishing will dry it out and we'll get maximum reflectivity then. It's still pretty good. Have you felt it? Dave, take a feel on it. It's like glass. It's like granite.
so the 3,000 grit resin bond is like your wet sanding of the con of a of a of car paint, and then this is like buffing. And the little just gives it that. Come up at the, end, right? the what? The little fine uh, concrete powder residue is leaving will be. Yeah, there shouldn't the there shouldn't be much it. actually. Yeah, yeah. You scrub it down. There, yeah, there shouldn't be much at all. But the shine's gone now. Look at the powder. Oh, here. See the light bulbs? Okay, I see it now. It's like glass.